um, let's let's see. I think there's one more important question here. What's the strategy to get the edge on entry? Okay, excellent, excellent question. Um, so what we are doing now to get a hyper of probability trade is to look at it from various angles. Okay. I mean, this is what this is what the kind of stuff that you know you're going to learn in Trader Max. Uh, first, once you have your trade determined, let's say, let's say you have a trade determined, I have I feel Tesla is going to move up over the next, uh, say, two to three weeks. So I'm not going to make it a day trade because it's too early after earnings because it's too, you know, I mean, it could go down, go up anything. But I believe over the next two to three weeks, it's going to try to make its way up because this was a very, very smooth move that it made uh, almost for like six months or something. So, uh, you know, this is just too smooth. Okay. So this is all coming with some, you know, uh, strength. And here you can see the volume starts increasing. You know, you, you know that the pressure is build, building up and it's going, to, it's going to crack sometime. But right now, I think it's a bullish trade. So let me, let me structure a trade and I'll, I'll, and I'll show you what I mean by the edge. In this particular case, now remember, every trade, now I don't even know what tra trade I'm going to make, but regardless of that, every trade has to be looked at with, through different parameters. Okay, Because you know, one size just doesn't fit all. You can't compare the analysis of a strangle to that of a calendar. No, I mean, it doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, so each strategy has to go through this process. And that's what the four weeks is all about. You, you're going to learn what is that process for every, any kind of trade. Okay, so let's go here. This is a good example. Tesla, now my conviction may not be right. You know, I, I'm saying it's going to go up, but... I'm not saying that I, I'm saying I think it might go up and therefore I'm preparing a trade with that uh, sort of an outlook. And so on Tesla, first of all, I would want to go go out at least till either the 26 or the 33. Let's let's look at 26. See, also, you have to look at. It's not just how many days to expiry. It is. If 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 one week goes by, you know, this 26 is going to become 19. Would you be comfortable hanging in the trade at that time when time decay is even more powerful at that point? Okay, uh, that's the question you have to ask. How long are you going to keep it? How long do you want to keep it? So if I look at it from that angle, I would go for the 33 because it's only the last 15, 20 days that the prices just start collapsing in, you know, in terms of time decay. Okay, so here now I would go for the 33. So let's do 33. And now I don't know what's the what's the trade, right? So here, Tesla's volatility seems like it's normalized, especially after earnings, right? So after 37, 37, 40 is the first one. That's the next earnings, <laughs> believe it or not. So obviously it'll be that. Okay, so it, this seems to be its normal range anyway. So one way you can check uh, about it is go back to the historical volatility, lower study, and see what it is. Um, you know, certainly, oh, look where it's coming from. My goodness. You know, 73. This is what, 54. Okay, I'll take 37. Okay, so 37 is not bad. If you wanted to short Tesla, I would come closer to about the 10 days or something and short it because 37% means a lot of price you're going to get. Okay, that's a lot of price. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, 40%. But you won't do that. You would do the 12 days. At five days, the risk to reward won't be very satisfactory. So if you look at this and do it, let's say you're just going to do a credit spread, right? So you do a bear call. Okay, a simple bear call. Uh, nowadays, they've started these $2.5 options. So I am going to make this a $5. Okay, so you're going to get 120 on a $5 spread, which is exactly what? Almost one quarter, right? 1.25 would have been one quarter. Yeah, so you're getting, um, you know, let's say 20% or 22%, whatever it is, and you're risking, uh, you know, the others. So... Uh, the balance that is 
So yeah, I mean, and, and so there, your ROI is going to be what? At best, it's going to be 20% on this trade. Now, let's go this one. And the same, uh, then the same one, which is, so this is 10th March. You're getting 150. Even that's not good, actually. So it's, it, it is a low volatility condition right now with Tesla. When, because when you move these strikes around, if option prices don't move too much, then that means that volatility is pretty much sucked out of the stock. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I could go for a long, uh, you know, uh, a debit spread. I could go for a credit spread also. Uh, frankly, to, uh, to tell you the truth, I will wait for one or two days to see which way Tesla is moving and then take a call from there. Otherwise, if I think that I am going to... Um, I'm, I, I, you know, if I believe that it's going to be bullish, right? Let's say that, right? So I'm going to take a bullish uh, trade on this. Now, this is a bullish trade. No, it's not. I need to buy this. Okay, if it's a call, yeah. So if you look at the risk profile for this thing, um, Why is this doing this? I don't get it. Definitely something wrong. Anyway, so, but if you were to buy this uh, 262, 267 call, you pay a debit of 1.5. So, which means your reward is going to be 3.5. Okay. So, now, why is it not showing that? I don't know, because uh, we're putting it to analyze, right? See, this thing cost, this is the part I don't like about think or swim, okay? There, there's just too many things that can, and, you know, frankly, they get changed automatically. You know, it, it's not that we do anything. Uh, it's just for some strategies, it puts something else, and for others, it puts something else, and it's just a mess there. So, not sure, expiration, maybe. No, that's one. This is the strike prices. Commission exclude. Usually you would want to keep it as include. In the money. Yeah, I don't see anything. You know, why why is this not showing? I don't know. Show all. Hide simulations. Oh, minus the simulation. Hide positions. Harry, we have a few suggestions on the chat. Yeah. Let me check. Right click should also do it. Close and open. That <laughs> close the think or swim. You mean? It shouldn't do that, man. But uh, I, I'll, I'll try the other thing. Right click and see. Let's say analyze trade. Specifically saying, calling it out to analyze. And that doesn't work. Uh, the <laughs> They have these little things on various corners of the of the screen, and you know if you miss that, then uh, you know it could completely change things. That's the part of Thinkorswim uh, I'm, I'm, I I don't like. Interactive brokers is so much better that way. Anyway, so I don't know why this is not showing. Um, I'm sure we are not configured something, but the problem is, you know, why why should we? You know, it should be uh, remain the same. There should be a default for it. Can you start a new workspace? Okay, I can try that. So let's say, uh, let me peel this off, right? So let me... Okay, so even all my menus are not set up properly here. Reset, detach, export to file take screenshot let me detach it that way i can at least get it out of the way and which will give which should give me a new uh, 
graph. There we go. Wow, that was great, Chris. Huh, that was great. Excellent. But you can't close this window, okay? That's the main window. If you close that, then it's, you know, the entire application will shut down.